This is a beautiful and inspirational space that we are sitting in here right now. It is an art gallery that specializes in fine art and 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th century antique furnishings. It is Rumi Gallery, located in Mississauga, and Suzanne, it is unbelievable here. And I have to say that Rumi Galleries is our gold sponsor for our East Meets West Celebrity Winemakers Dinner. We are thrilled to be sitting here with Joseph Rumi, the Director of Fine Art of the Gallery. Hello, Joseph. How are you this afternoon? Uh, great. How are you? We oh, we are doing fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing awesome. I think I would like to start things off, first of all, by just saying thank you so very much for your tremendous support mm -hmm. for our fundraiser, our East Meets West Celebrity Winemakers Dinner, um, the gold sponsorship. We really, really appreciate that. Oh, you're most welcome. Not a problem. It was our pleasure. I mean, um, anything that uh, helps Art House as well is, and arts education, uh, we, we'd love to work with. So. After all, it's all about the art, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, it's fantastic. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Rumi Galleries. Um, well, the company originally started as a, an antique company, um, specifically restoration and conservation. My father went over to England and trained as an apprentice at Restle Brown & Clennell, which is one of the top firms in, in England. They actually do the furniture for Harrods and um, worked on pieces for the Queen, I believe, too. Mm -hmm. um, so he started there, then he, uh, after training, he came back here and uh, he founded the company in Oakville in 1981. And then um, from there, I started working um, with the company as an apprentice at 14. And uh, then, working well, on the furniture work, working on the furniture, I learned uh, antique furniture restoration conservation, which mm -hmm. was, you know, very interesting. I mean, you start doing the groundwork, like sweeping the floors and, <laughs> and uh, you know, doing the steel wool and wax, which is the really tough part. But uh, eventually you move on to um, touching up fine furniture, French polishing, that sort of thing. Um, and then after that, I went away uh, to do my um, education in uh, fine art at uh, University of Victoria and then over to England like my father mm -hmm. and then came back here and joined the company in 2007 and here we are. It's a remarkable stunning, gallery, isn't stunning it? spot. And it's a real family affair. So there's your, your father that's involved. Your mother, Charlotte, mm -hmm. is also involved. Yeah. She plays a little bit of a different role in, de in the design, I think it is. She does. She's the best in terms of being able to visualize a space. Uh, my father and I, uh, we were good at handling the, the floors and the walls in terms of like the furniture and the paintings and going out and searching for different things. Um, Mom is too, but my father and I, we can't visualize a space like my mother can. Um, she can. She can see a space before it's even built, wow. um, which is phenomenal. And she actually built uh, their own house in Oakville um, and did all the architectural plans. It was amazing, amazing. Yeah, it was really, really a, a sight to see when her vision was kind of coming together. So tell us a little bit about the art gallery itself. Like, do you have different kinds of exhibits that go on and how often do they change if people want to come and visit? Uh, we do. We have uh, solo shows for our artists. Uh, this year we actually have one for Nicholas Malcolm, which is coming up on the 29th of uh, September. Mm -hmm. um, we have another one for Sonia Haidas. Um, so in between um, having um, solo shows for different artists, we also have special events. Uh, and, um, and then it's pretty much just uh, the day-to-day. -day. Um, you know, we have collectors who come in. Um, a particular collector came, uh, called us today after coming in last week and, and decided to purchase a work, which is fantastic. Yes, I think we're going to talk about that piece a little later <laughs> on in the show. Okay. And it's actually a pre-sale before, <laughs> yeah, before Art Toronto, which is fabulous. I mean, you can't get better than that. So. And I think he got in there just before the prices were going to go up, too. <laughs> he did. He was very, very lucky. It was pretty much by, so a, by a hair. He paid a thousand bucks or two. Yeah. <laughs> So. so we also heard the story, there was something very interesting that you told us when we first met you, Joseph, and um, we know that you're, you specialize in fine art, your father does more of the antiques, and you're really into the fine art. And you had an experience with an authentic Rembrandt, mm -hmm. and uh, Suzanne had said that um, we actually thought we saw you shaking when you, you were recounting the story to us. <laughs> you tell can us tell about us that. about that. Well, it's pretty exciting. It's not every day that you get to sit in front of a Rembrandt, uh, and uh, which, no. isn't on the, <laughs> which isn't on the wall either in a museum. Um, I was very fortunate to um, uh, 
visit uh, a restoration conservation studio, a top one in, in London, England. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually looking for an apprenticeship. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't, um, I couldn't do an apprenticeship, but um, the owner of the, of the studio said I could come in and I could observe everything. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would go there occasionally and, and sit and watch restorers work on the paintings. And at one point, there happened to be uh, an authentic Rembrandt sitting in front wow. of me. And I was watching um, this restorer painstakingly restore this Rembrandt um, and uh, it, it's it's just such a thrill because yeah. you can't really you can interact with a painting in a museum mm -hmm. um, by looking at it but you don't get the opportunity to really get up close and personal with the right. work and wow. also History. yeah exactly yeah. and and also see the back of a painting. To, to most people, it probably sounds like, oh, that's, what do you care about the back? Well, there's so much information on the back of a piece. Oh, really? Oh, Who yeah, you can see the, the, the age of the piece, the, the type of stretcher that they used, the oh, canvas wow. that they used. Wow. It's, it's, really, it's really a treat when you get the opportunity to do something like that. So, so I was kind of shaking a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite exciting. So let's talk a little bit about the art that you have here in the gallery now. Now, I know there's a piece there at the, behind us that we're going to be talking about, uh, done by the the Iron Man, yes. and it's called Beheaded. Beheaded, that's correct. Let's hear about that. Um, well, the Iron Men, um, they are a group of artists who actually, there's three of them. There's um, Matthew Vari, Gary Michael Dalt, who uh, was also a critic for the Globe and Mail, mm -hmm. and um, uh, John Scott, who is kind of considered the bad boy of, of Canadian contemporary art, I guess. Um, <laughs> And so, they let him in on, on the canvas, did they? They, they, they did. Uh, but they're, they're a group of artists who, who, who get together, and they call themselves the Iron Men because um, uh, it's kind of like a, a marathon of painting for them. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And they, they don't work on it at different times. Mm -hmm. They all work on it at the same time. Wow. At the same time? Yeah, so it's actually quite funny because the, you know, the, you know, one artist will say one thing and then the other two will debate that no, and one will say another. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you, the, this is the funny thing. I actually was talking to Matthew at one point and I was saying, you know, like, how does that work? How do you guys interact? And he's like, I'm kind of the one who sits back and, and John and, and, and Gary, they actually argue quite a bit. And then I come in and I kind of settle things down and we, then we go to it. So it's, 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 it's interesting. It is. It's very I think interesting. they referred to themselves as something like a think tank. Yes. Where they all sort of, you know, go over their ideas and nothing is discounted immediately. Everybody nope. gets a fair shake and they sort of see where it all unfolds. They do. It's, it's a really unique creative process. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to, to have three people working so closely together and then produce such a, a beautiful... Um, it is spectacular. Amazing. Yeah, it it's is. Gorgeous. beautiful work. And this one is still available. It is. <laughs> and it will be at uh, Art Toronto at the end of uh, October. So. Okay. So why don't we get up and uh, visit some of the other fabulous pieces that you have here in, in the, uh, the art gallery. I think sure. that would be a great idea. What do you think, guys? Sounds Absolutely. Great. Let's All right. do it. So over here, ladies, we have a work by Michael Mavian. Um, Michael is actually a very interesting uh, up-and-coming artist. Uh, I love his work because it's so intricate. Um, each of these individual pieces here has been compiled from uh, a publication of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, so he started off at, at OCAD in, in design, and what he, he found frustrating about uh, design and fine art is that both are very similar, but um, they don't really connect. Right. There's a lot of animosity between designers and artists, and they don't feel they're kind of like on equal terms. Is there a little bit of rivalry that's going on between the two? I don't think it's so much that. I think it's more that they they just um, they feel like it's two different things, uh -huh. and 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 Michael wanted to kind of make a statement and say, well, it's it, it's not. It can be the same thing. You can incorporate the same elements, and so he took his design uh, background mm -hmm. and and then brought in his artistic side and uh, put together this uh, wonderful work here, which is called the world we live in. Uh, and it's actually made up of, there are pieces, he collects different publications, very, very old ones, like Life magazine from the oh, 50s and 60s. Uh -huh. He even gets old newspapers. This one, I think, is from like 1909 or something like that. Wow. Um, so, and even, you know, old cartoons and, and whatnot. And he combines them all mm -hmm. into this intricate work. And Is the relevance of, of those actual stories that happened on that day in that newspaper relevant at all? Or no? Is well, it sort of the date? Or is there... No, he, he brings certain elements into it. I mean, this is all about, this is supposed to be like a stock ticker. 
right? Uh -huh. Okay, so oh, okay. like, you know, kind of on the way going up. Right. And so um, that's why you've got elements of like buy and dollar and, uh -huh. you know, uh, okay. the furnaces roar. So like the industrial revolution, that sort of thing. So uh, that, that's what Michael's trying to get across in this work. So I have a question, a piece like this, would this be more for a home that's like a classic home or a more modern home? Who would buy something like this? You know what? Classic or modern, regardless, it goes either, it, way. It's, it goes either way. It's really what happens is somebody has to connect with a mm -hmm. piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. you, you don't just go out and buy a piece of artwork because, for the sake of buying a piece of artwork. You go mm -hmm. out and you buy a piece of artwork because you love it. It's just like loving a great bottle of wine. You don't go and buy a great bottle of wine because you, you, know, you don't get some, you know, some Chateau Margaux because it's just Chateau Margaux. You get it because you love it. Right. Um, and, and it's part of that experience. And while wine is you know, tasting, art is aesthetic pleasure. So. Well, I, I know that I have four paintings in my home and they're, um, by, they're by a Ukraine painter. They're oil mm -hmm. paintings. Um, uh, Zuzek is his name. Mm -hmm. Roman Zuzek. And I know every time I walk by or I walk up the staircase and I look at my paintings, it really resonates with me and it just makes me smile. And I guess that's a lot of what artwork is all about. It's that's how exactly you connect it. to that. Absolutely. It's really, it's really quite something. Yes. Now there's another piece here we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. Okay, so this is the third picture that you want to share with us, the one that indeed has already sold. Yeah. <laughs> but please, we'd still like to know a little bit about Linda, the artist. Maybe you can tell us something about her. Well, Linda Martinello is very unique in the sense that she travels around the world, mm -hmm. um, but doesn't record anything while she's traveling. She has somebody oh. else record it for her. She's all about the experience okay. and remembering that experience, taking yourself back at ta in time. It's kind of like when you go on a, a really great trip and then you want to remember that, you know, that fantastic, you know, museum that you went to or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, she traveled to Turkey and she went to the Zemi Valley and that's what this work is. Oh. And she does all of her work from memory oh. and, and so the, even including the colors. So it, it, it's, it, she has a really interesting way of, of, of producing her work because she's not trying to create a realistic interpretation. She's trying to create her perceived interpretation. Oh, that's exactly. interesting. Wow. Yeah. And uh, do a lot of artists not work that way? I haven't encountered that many. Mm -hmm. um, most tend to, to work from um, some type of, of realistic image right. or um, they, they uh, paint on site or en plein air as they say. Okay. Um, but uh, Linda is a, is a little bit different. She, she kind of um, takes elements of the atmosphere around her and mm -hmm. brings them back into the studio and then reproduces them in her own image. Well it truly so, is a beautiful painting I have to say. It is wonderful. Lucky person who bought it. He's very very lucky. <laughs> very very lucky. Yeah. All right, so people want to come to Rumi Galleries. It's rumigalleries.com, and I imagine your website features a lot of the art on the website and the different uh, showcases that are happening. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right, yeah. so everybody, Rumi Galleries uh, in Mississauga, right off Lakeshore Road. Uh, come and visit. It's a spectacular spot. <laughs>